guys and welcome back to the Cassie Project. So today we're doing a 365 days of art. I'm sorry it's been so long and we're having a bit of a catch up today so we've got a fair few prompts to do. There's been a lot of pages that you've missed over the last couple of weeks. So this is what we did in the previous episode and then I've gone on to do some more prompts. This one was my absolute favourite. Drawings of fruit cut in half. So we had some really interesting prompts over the last couple of weeks. We've got some colouring in pages. We also had another turn the paint splodges into animals. Quite enjoyed my cat and my little otter lying on his back. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. So here you can see we've been drawing some mouths and eyes, doing a bit of realism. Okay, so now we're going on to prompt 110. Design a pattern using the grid. Now this is exactly the same as one of the previous videos that we did and we did a bumblebee. This time I want to do something completely different and I've been having a little flick through Google looking at different hexagonal designs and I come across one that had loads of golds and navy blue so I thought yeah I'm definitely gonna do that today so I've grabbed some gold Posca paint markers some dark blues and greys and yeah I'm just gonna add a big splash of color onto this page to start with so I'm using my Derwent pencils and then I'm gonna add water to it to create a bit of a base then I'm gonna go on to add in some more color into the different hexagons add in some gold so there's some like big chunks of um, hexagonal gold parts and we've got these lovely gold leaves interspersed throughout the different hexagons so I kept working on that until I felt like it was complete I didn't fill in the whole page I didn't think I needed to to be honest it was very detailed work so I really enjoyed that one moving on to prompt 111, 111 shading can add depth to your drawings there are different techniques for shading including the ones below use the right hand side to try them for yourself basically they've given us some examples of different ways of shading and then we're going to copy them so we've got some cross hatching so you can make it look darker by putting the lines closer together and then the more the lines are dispersed that's when it looks lighter and then I'm going to go on to the dots when they're all together in one spot it looks darker whereas when you disperse them they look a lot lighter then we're using a colored pencil applying more pressure to one side and then relieving the pressure to make it lighter and then finally they want us to use a bit of watercolor so they're asking us to do a light wash of watercolor to start with and then you add some layer of colouring blocks to the areas that you want to darken. They are all different techniques that I do tend to use. Um, I really enjoy doing dots, it's really fun and of course you know I'm very used to watercolour. Moving on to prompt 112, draw a scene in this window, are you looking in or out? Now straight away I thought I was going to do a landscape kind of painting behind it but now it says are you looking in or out it's kind of made me change my mind because I know most people will want to do like a landscape in the background you know like you're looking out a window but I really enjoy drawing rooms and furniture I know I should probably do the landscape because I probably find that more difficult but no I, I think I'm going to enjoy it more doing drawing the inside of the house so first I'm gonna go in with my pencil sketch I'm adding a few little different accessories so we've got a little vase with flowers um, a candle a little mug um, add some cushions onto the sofa and then I'm gonna go in with my Posca paint markers actually um, I don't know why I just want to so <laughs> yeah I'm going in with like a beige color for the sofa and because we've got a blue background I think I'm gonna leave that as the wallpaper then go in with some wooden brown colours for the sideboard and the table. I think a grey carpet will look quite nice and I'm going to just add greys and blues to, you know, make this, this room look aesthetic. Aesthetically pleasing. Absolutely love how that one's turned out. That was really fun. Moving on to prompt 113. Draw an animal using cut out pieces of paper. I, I think I want to do a zebra. So I'm going to uh, colour in this sheet of paper here using my black Posca paint marker and then I'm going to cut out loads of strips of paper. I'm going to draw on a template of a zebra because uh, I think it will just be too difficult to do just sticking the paper straight on. So I'm going to do the outline of the zebra to help myself out and then I'm going to go in and stick on those different stripes. Thank you. 
now I've got a fair few stripes down what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that with Mod Podge um, just to get rid of the sticky residue because I've got glue everywhere um, and then I can go over it with some Posca paint marker to tidy it up and make it look like an actual zebra so here you go here's my little zebra love that moving on to the last prompt a nice simple one to finish off today's video which is add smiles to these stars so basically i've just add, got to add a bunch of expressions to these stars i'm not going to just do smiles i'm going to do some shocked faces and a few sad faces just to make it more interesting and actually i think i'm going to put a few stars upside down because <laughs> that's interesting so there you go there are my prompts for this week i really hope you enjoyed this video we've got the hexagonal patterns different types of shading looking into a living room a zebra and some stars i mean that is some variety and that is what i love about this book you are constantly doing something different anyway so do carry on watching more videos and if you haven't already please do subscribe to this channel it really does help me out and i will see you tomorrow for a tiny tuesday bye